Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera and my third video today from Aoyama Park next to Tokyo National Art Center. It's just as noisy here as it was earlier. The cicadas are still uh, out here doing whatever it is cicadas do. Uh, to give you an idea of how many there are, uh, if you see this short clip, uh, I got these branch, this branch off of a nearby cherry tree and it looks like so many of these guys are coming out at night that they are molting on top of each other. So, uh, yeah, quite a few of these guys in the trees around me. Uh, as noisy as it is here, in this small park in the middle of the Tokyo metro area, you can imagine what the noise is going to be like out in the countryside, where there are zillions of acres and zillions of trees, and no concrete or sidewalks or anything to block them from digging their way up, up from underneath the ground. Uh, it's quite noisy here, quite a bit different from a couple of weeks ago when I made my video about the uh, Canon FX rangefinder camera, or excuse me, SLR camera. I'm quite happy that the summer has arrived and it's warm here, but uh, I wish it were a little bit more quiet on top of the uh, cicadas. Now, of course, I have the helicopter deciding to uh, add its music uh, to the background. So, anyway, we'll go ahead and get started on the last video today, and it's going to be about another Ares rangefinder camera. My previous Ares video was about the 3C, which is my favorite Ares camera. Uh, I prefer the, the 3C for a number of reasons. I like the overall design, the way it fits in the hand, and the way the controls and functions work. Uh, I love the lens, the 45mm f1.9 lens. I like the Leica M3 style rangefinder with the parallax correction. And what I really like about it is how easy it is to work on compared to some of the earlier Ares rangefinder cameras. It's just an overall really good camera. But one of the cameras which came out prior to the uh, 3C and one which is a very well-made camera is this particular one, which is the Ares 35 3L. Uh, the 3L is one of the most difficult to find uh, Ares cameras and one which I very rarely come across. I might see one of these maybe uh, once every other month here. And over the years, this is about the, the third one which I've come across, which has been in good enough condition for me to uh, service and resell. The good thing about the 35 3L is that it features the same lens which you find in the 3C, uh, the Ares Coral 45mm f1.9 lens, which is an outstanding performer. Uh, it's a kind of a simplified version of the 3C. It still has a very large and bright viewfinder, but it does not have the uh, parallax correction system that the 3C has. But still it has bright lines and it, and it has indicators which allow you to choose between focusing at infinity and at more close distances. The 3L was introduced in 1957, if I remember correctly, and was not one of, not very big seller for Aries because it was rather expensive. Most people opted for the less expensive models with the slower lens. So uh, it's one of the reasons I don't find so many of these. We'll go ahead and take a look at the features and functions and how to use uh, an Aries 35 3L. Uh, starting at the top here on the left side, we have this uh, kind of uh, computer scale thing which you can turn one way or the other. If you push it all the way toward the front, you see the words here which say empty. And this is what you would select if you had no film loaded in the camera to let you know that it was empty. And as you turn it downward, it begins to show a scale of numbers which show the uh, film speeds which you have uh, loaded in the camera. Uh, this is simply a mechanical reminder and has nothing to do with the operation of the camera. Uh, some people believe, uh, I guess who are new to photography, believe that if you do not set this scale to match the film you have loaded in the camera that it won't work properly. That's of course necessary if you're shooting an electronic camera, uh, which you have to uh, program the camera to know what film speed it is in. But in a mechanical li camera like this, it doesn't really matter. This is just a convenient reminder to let you know what film you have loaded in it. Moving next to that, we have the film rewind knob, which extends, which you pull out to insert a film canister inside and you push back in. And it's of course the lever folds out here to make it easier to wind. Here's the indicator for the focal plane. Uh, next to that we have a shoe for mounting the uh, flash gun. Next to that we have the film counter uh, dial window to let you know how many shots you have remaining. Uh, here we have the shutter release button which accepts a standard cable release. And of course we have the film winding and shutter charging lever. 
uh, unlike some of the other Aries rangefinder cameras, to adjust the rangefinder in this camera, you have to remove the top cover. There, there is no external access to allow you to make adjustments. Uh, removing the top cover is not very hard. You simply push down on this rounded nut with your thumb and take it off, like so. And then you have a screw here with two holes in it. You use a pair of pliers or uh, tweezers to engage those holes. Turn it out leftwards and lift it off. And you have to remove the, uh, of course you have to remove the film rewind knob. You loosen the screw in the center and then stick up a uh, screwdriver in the fork on the inside and unscrew the winding knob. Then remove this screw on the right side and remove this round screw using your tweezers or needle nose pliers and the cover lifts off. And you will find the adjustment screws for the rangefinder located uh, on the bottom side here and uh, on the right side here next to the window. And of course uh, putting the camera together is the op just do this the steps I described in reverse. It's quite simple, it sounds a little bit difficult but it's not. So moving on to the back of the camera we don't have anything at all here except for the viewfinder window. On the bottom here we have the uh, standard uh, a tripod socket which accepts a quarter inch tripod uh, I guess head and here you have the release lever which allows you to rewind the film. Uh, on the lens of the camera we find the most important controls. Of course we have the uh, focusing uh, tab on the bottom and uh, focusing scale in the Aries 3L setup in meters and on the top here you have a depth of field scale uh, which allows you to easily determine the depth of field. Uh, here we have a ring uh, in front of that which you use to select the uh, type of shutter speed for a, a particular flash. The M setting is what you use for normal use and of course there's an F and X for X-Sync and such. In front of that we have the uh, shutter ring but it's kind of a combined ring. The Aries, like other cameras of the time, uses uh, an EV interlock system and to use it on this camera, unlike other ones, you have to pull forward and turn. So you can for example, you can see me changing the shutter speeds here, but the shutter speed is limited depending on what uh, EV scale I'm using. To be able to extend or further the shutter speed range, I have to turn it out, like so. It's, uh, it seems a little bit complicated to use an EV system like they have on the Aries 35 3L, but it really isn't, and with a little practice you can get to using it uh, quite easily. And it works quite well if you are using a light meter which uses an EV scale system, which is a little bit easier to understand than reading the, uh, say, uh, aperture and shutter speed numbers off a light meter. Just read the EV number and set it to the red EV number here, and uh, you can choose the different EV numbers by simply turning the, the scale one way or the other. And of course, by pulling, that's how the, the ring on the front, that is how you adjust for the different apertures. The film loading system is quite simple. Just pop open the door, push up the fork for the film rewind stop, drop your film canister here, push the fork back down, stretch your film meter across uh, the film chamber here, and feed it into the slot here on the take-up spool, and wind it, making sure that the holes in the film line up with the sprockets here uh, on the winding spool. And once it is in, close the door. You have to manually pull down on the latch to close it. And then simply wind the shutter until the number one appears in the frame counter. Now the Aries uh, 35-3L is quite a, a nice camera, a very good performer. It's uh, My only complaint about this camera is the fact that it's more difficult to work on than some other cameras. Uh, the difficulty lies in the, the steps you have to go through to remove the lens and shutter assembly for uh, cleaning and overhauling. On the Aries 3C it's quite a simple uh, process, but on the 3L it is not. Uh, so they're a little bit more labor intensive. Uh, this particular camera is in really good condition. Uh, the shutter works properly. I've already gone through and uh, cleaned and adjusted it. 
Uh, the viewfinder has also been cleaned and adjusted, and overall this is a really good working camera. I'll be listing this camera uh, tonight for sale on my uh, new online store, japanvintagecamera.com, as well as my Etsy and eBay stores. Uh, if you buy from my store, I'll give you uh, a $10 discount uh, compared to shopping at my Etsy or eBay stores, because I'm trying to get more people to come to my online store. So if you're interested in buying this camera or another vintage uh, Japanese camera, uh, please visit my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. I'll be posting more videos about cameras shortly because I've ordered a lot of cameras which I will be listing soon and any new one which I haven't made a video about I plan to make a video about. So if you want to see them uh, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.